I need somebody to open up your mouth and shabak him and say, God, don't pass me by. No, I need you to look up towards heaven and say, Lord, don't pass me by. Whatever you're doing in this season, I don't want you to pass me by. As a matter of fact, tell two, three people around you, he's not going to pass you by. Tell them whatever God has for you, it's going to be for you. Because don't nobody know the hell that you done been through. All the stuff that you done had to go through. But I dare you to open up your mouth and shout, Lord, don't pass me by. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your pointer finger, point it at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's got something special for you. As a matter of fact, tell them I got a three-word prophecy that I need to give to you. And that three-word prophecy is any day now. Is there anybody in here you've been waiting on God to do something for you? I tell you to open up your mouth and shout any day now. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Look at somebody and say any day now. Tell them again, any day now. If you believe it, open up your mouth and say it's already done. Put your preaching voice on and shout, it's already done. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, I feel something. I feel a breakthrough in the atmosphere. I feel a healing in the atmosphere. Anybody need a breakthrough or a healing? I dare you to take two or three steps and shout, I'm already healed. I'm already delivered. I'm already set free. Somebody shout any day now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those of you who are watching us by live stream, put in the comments any day now. Any, any day now. Any. Any day now. Woo! Yeah, I love the sound of that, brother. <laughs> You're going to make me act up in here. <laughs> Listen, listen, do me a favor. Tell somebody next to you, you're special. Tell them you're special. Mm -hmm. Tell them you're special. Listen, I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And check this out, on a Friday night. Somebody shout, on a Friday night. Listen, I gotta behave. Hold on, let me let me get all these preliminary. Yeah, yeah I feel like running. <laughs> Tell your neighbor if I had fifteen good seconds. That's it, that's it. My, 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 my. One more time to make that, it, get, she need 10 more seconds. She need 10 more, she need 10 more. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. My, my, my. One more time, make the devil mad and just shout any day now. Yeah, yeah. Listen how we honor the Lord. <laughs> Reverend, I'm going to hurt myself tonight. <laughs> Listen how we honor the Lord today for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. One more time, tell somebody next to you, you got something big coming to you.
Tell them your prayers are not have been in, they're not in vain. They're not in vain. God heard your prayers. He heard you. He heard you. He heard you. And this is only for about five of you, but the Lord said tonight, watch this, the tables are getting ready to turn in your favor. For the pastors and leaders that are here, the table is getting ready to turn in your favor. Matter of fact, the Lord just says, scoot up to the table because the table is spread. We honor his presence. I feel the oil in this atmosphere. I feel breakthrough in this atmosphere. Listen, I'm excited to be here at the first conference for the Unity Fellowship Alliance of Churches. Come on, let's make some noise for your presiding prelate, Apostle Terry D. Williams. Come on. The first lady of this alliance, come on. Let me celebrate her, come on. To all of these pastors, the second presider, we honor you, Overseer Taylor, we thank you. To all these wonderful pastors, their lovely wives, the churches, can you give it up for this choir? Listen, you know, it's something, and then let me just say, I don't even know her name, but the director. Listen, listen. See, let me let me just say this. You know it's old school, Mickey. You know it's old school. When you're directing the choir and the choir don't sound like it needs to sound, so what you do is you just say. We don't have that like we used to, Doc. We just want to make sure that the sound that comes out of our mouth is pleasing unto God. Amen. No matter, watch this, and let me help choirs and praise teams out across the country. No matter if, even if you do sound off key, if the oil is on you. I've seen the anointing break some yokes. Do I got any witnesses in here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we honor him and thank him. Listen, I don't want to prolong the time because I definitely want to get into this word. But I'm so honored uh, to be here again to share. Um, Apostle called and wanted me to come back. And I'm, I'm just elated uh, to be here. Amen. Listen, let's get into this word because I do want to deposit um, some things into not only pastors but lay people that are here on tonight and so if you have your bibles or your smart devices whatever you have i would like for you to rest upon your feet in honor of god's word and i want to go to the book of acts i want to go to the book of acts the 27th chapter it's a very familiar passage of scripture but i do not want you to look at it from the lenses as you have read it previously I believe that what God is getting ready to deposit on tonight, he is going to shift your perspective into another level. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I'm going to skip around on some verses. I'll be able to kind of exegete the text a little bit. But um, Acts 27, let me start with verse 21. Verse 21. If you have it, shout, I have the bread. The word of the Lord says, but after being, uh, ab but after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought 
before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. I, I, I am going to um, probably get to verses 30 through 38 as it relates to the presentation, but I'm going to stop right there, and I want to just tag the text tonight. I want to talk about a faith for the future. That's what I want to talk about. Nothing profound, nothing prolific, but I want you to look at somebody and tell them a faith for the future. Say it again, a faith for the future. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. A faith for the future. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, let me start the conversation off by sharing with you that God still has time to make his best move in your life. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that as that we get ready to conclude 2021, that many of you are still in position of receiving the blessings of God. I believe that all of us probably could agree tonight that 2021 has brought some heartache. It has brought some things that has left us scratching our head as it relates to God, what are you doing? Even from a pastoral standpoint, you're trying to pastor, scratch your head as it relates to what does 2022 look like? How do we uh, ponder, if you will, the next move that we need to accomplish even in our own ministry? And the Spirit of God, as I begin to even uh, have conversation with him, he says there's a couple of things that I want you to write down even before I attack the, the, the Scripture with the intensity. He says, tell my people, son, that they're getting ready to receive uncommon favor uncommon favor. If you like to write, uh, because I'm, I'm a teacher, so I, I will give you uh, some principles and some strategies tonight, and then we'll get some ice cream here after mo in a moment. But he told me, first of all, to let you know that, number one, you're getting ready to receive uncommon favor. Not only that, but he says you're getting ready to also receive uncontested success. Which means, watch this, that whatever I have been believing God for, even though the enemy is after you, God has put a protection or a hedge of protection around you so that you won't have uncontested success. In other words, let me put it to, in a simple term, you're getting ready to experience sweatless victories. Look at somebody and tell them sweatless victories. And so as I begin to get ready to unpack this passage of scripture, let me share with you, Apostle, that, of course, John Maxwell is one of my favorite leadership gurus. And he says that uh, in, in this particular text, uh, Maxwell says that Paul was an inmate on a virtual ship. And he had no influence. If you know John Maxwell, you know that his definition of leadership is a person of influence. And so he says on the onset of Paul's ministry, it seemed like he had no influence. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the same chapter around verse 11 that the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship. But by the end of the voyage, everyone was listening to him, including the centurion. Paul exemplified what was called the law of influence. To really understand chapter 27, I have to take you back a couple of chapters chapters to comprehend what we are uh, here in this particular text tonight because in chapter 20 stay with me Paul has completed his missionary work in a town called Ephesus but when he has finished preaching he calls the church together to let them know that he believes that the Holy Ghost has assigned him to go back to Jerusalem the Ephesian elders try to persuade Paul not to go back to Jerusalem because they know that there is trouble that is awaiting him for the same Jews the same Sanhedrin council that crucified Jesus now has their target set 
on Paul. They try to set Paul or tell Paul, don't go back to Jerusalem. And Paul gives them a verse that's one of my favorites. He says, watch this, none of these things move me. Mm. Neither do I count my life unto myself that I might finish my course. Not only finish my course, but finish my course with joy. Mm. And so he says, because I have received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the good news of God, I'm going back to Jerusalem. Let me pause for just a moment and let you know what Paul was basically saying in the text, that none of these things move me. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when you are anointed by God and you have an assignment on your life, you cannot operate in the spirit of fear. The Bible says, that we don't have the spirit of fear but but of love and of, of a power and of a sound mind and so Paul says watch this no matter what I'm faced I know that I have what's on the inside of me to accomplish what God has set for me to do and all I'm trying to tell you early on in the message that you know that God has called you to a certain place and now you have to move in that place watch this not worried about the target that's on your life because God, watch this, God has a way that will allow you to accomplish things, watch this, in front of those that said you weren't going to accomplish anything. As a matter of fact, he said he'll make your enemies your footstool. And so that's why you cannot worry about the critics. You cannot worry about people because watch this, people will always have an opinion. But I know I got some witnesses that can lift your hands and say, I'm going to follow God no matter what. I'm going to follow him because watch, when I follow him, there's a blessing that's being attached to my following him. As a matter of fact, look at somebody real good and tell them if you are obedient, the blessing is attached. And, and so watch this. Here's, here it is. Here it is. There's a problem. Paul is now being arrested. He's arrested and he has a date that he has to get to Rome. But when I read you, before I go through all of the notes, let me just give you a synopsis of it. He is on the ship, okay, in verse 20, he stands up in front of the congregation on the ship and he says, the ship that we're on is not going to make it. He, 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 says, he says, now can you imagine, from, here, let me talk to the pastors for just a moment, can you imagine that when God gives you plans for the ministry, and all of a sudden, he says, tear up the plans because I got something else. Paul says, church, this ship that we're on is not going to make it. He says, but the good news is, is that even though the ship won't make it, Even though the ship is not going to survive. Because, watch this, you are attached to me. The ship is not going to survive, but the you are. Which means, watch this, when God's hand is on you. Sometimes we don't want to hear that things are about to fall apart. What do you do when you come lay people and you hear the voice from your leader and they're speaking life and you want to hear God is going to turn it around. He's going to heal your body. He's going to save your son. But what do you do when you get into the atmosphere and God says, I'm not going to turn this around though. I'm going to allow it to fall apart. That's not something you want to hear. You, you want to hear God's going to make a way out of no way. You want to know that he's going to order my steps. You want to hear it all, but what do you do when God changes the plan? What do you do when he says it's going to fall apart, but you got to have a faith for the future? Hmm. Because we walk by faith, mother, not by sight, but but the, the, 
But the, the tragedy and what's so ambiguous is that how do I survive when it seems like everything is falling apart around me? I mean, let's be honest. The last 19 months, things have fallen apart. We, we're still trying to figure out how to do ministry. We're still trying to figure out. We're online now. We got cameras everywhere. We, we, it's virtual. You, you can't stay this too close. Uh, you can't do that. You got to be vaccinated. You don't have to be vaccinated. We got all of this going on across the country. And can I tell you, can I tell you, musicians, the problem that I'm seeing across the globe is that even though we're still preaching Jesus, there are many people who have walked away from Christianity. Can, can I minister tonight? So, because, because there are so many people that are walking away from Christianity because they're trying to do or, or trying to attach themselves, watch this, to stuff. That's falling apart. And it moves the church for us to continue to say, stay connected to Jesus. Because watch this, even though everything else is falling apart, you won't. That's why some of you can lift hands in the sanctuary and say, God, I thank you, even though I know we're in COVID-19, but I thank God that you've been holding me. I thank God that you've been protecting me. I thank God. I wish I had three witnesses in here that opened up your mouth and say, God, I thank you for your protection. He says, he says, he says, listen. The ship that we own, it's not going to survive. So you can see them on the ship. You, you can see them saying, hey, did you hear what Pastor Paul said? Pastor Paul said the ship is not going to survive. But then, but did you hear? He said, but we're going to survive. So now I, you can hear the congregation talking in the ship. You, you probably they can say, well, how are we going to survive, though? What, what's the plan if the ship is going to fall apart? And that's when Pastor Paul was letting them know you got to have a faith for the future. You may not understand all the details, but you got to have a faith for the future. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them you are part of the future. And so it's powerful, Apostle, because as I begin to exegete the text, it's hard to hear those kinds of things. But then when I started studying the text, why does God allow certain things to fall apart? Why does he allow certain things that we pray for not come to pass? Hmm. So I'm asking these questions and I'm studying the text. First of all, Paul said, I told y'all not to sail from Crete in the first place. See, sometimes the reason, this ain't for everybody, sometimes the reasons why things fall apart in our life is because we're not obedient to what God has already said. Paul, Paul said, I told you not to sail in Crete, but what did you do? You sailed in Crete, and then watch this. You sailed in the winter. Can I tell you, even though there was a faith for the future, you still had to be still and hear God? See, sometimes we get so caught up that we're ready to sail when God says it's just a time to sit still. <laughs> No, 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 help me out. Because sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, when you try to rush God and put your hands in it, you're rushing his time. And God says, I'm not moving on your timetable. If I told you to sit still, that's exactly what I need you to do. You're ready to sail. And I say, sit still. You're ready to get married. And I said, no, work on yourself. You wanted the job, but I had another job in store for you. You were ready to sail, but I said, sit still. Look at your name and tell him, sit still. No, no, tell him again, sit still. Because when you hear the voice of God, 
then God says, I will give you the timing and the release. That's what is called the cadence of God. You know the rhythm of God. And some of us are out of rhythm. Mm -hmm. We're out of rhythm. And so because we're saying, God, you're taking too long. I need it to hurry up. I, I need you to accelerate because it seems like to me, you don't know where I am. Mm -hmm. you, you may not have ever had these conversations with God, but there are a lot of people that have had conversations with him privately and saying, God, when is it my turn? I done blessed everybody else. I done been there for everybody else, but it seems like I get put on the back burner. Or maybe y'all ain't never been there before. I get it. See, do not pass me by. Do not. But, but here's the thing. It seemed like he passing me by and everybody else getting blessed. And here I am faithful, sowing tithes, coming to this. And God, when is it my turn? He says, sit still. Because mm -hmm. if I give it to you too soon, you'll forfeit the blessing that I have in store for you. Am I helping somebody? I want to help you on this first conference to know that sometimes things will fall apart. But hang out with me to the end, I promise you. So he says, he says, Paul says, listen, everything, uh, the ship is not going to make it. You're going to make it. But first of all, I told you, I told y'all that to not sail from Crete, number one. And then number two, you got on the wrong ship. What do you do when you're in a hurry and you find something that you don't need to be with? Because, second presider, when you study the text, the ship that they were on was from Alexandria. The text says that they found the ship. We got to be careful on what we found or find that's not ordained by God. Because you'll find yourself in destruction finding stuff that God hadn't ordained. Am I making sense? Because if it's from God, he will give you the means to keep what he's already ordained for you to have. Am I making sense? But the text says when you do study, you will see that the Bible declares that they found the ship in Alexandria. So not only did they sail in the wrong season, they got on the wrong ship. Now can you imagine Paul giving all of this news and everybody's on the ship. They're trying to figure out how in the world are we going to survive? How in the world are you talking about a faith for the future but everything around us is falling apart? How is Christendom all across the country going to survive when all you hear on the news is this is going on and this is going on? Sometimes you got to turn the TV off because the news can be depressing. We got to start putting our face back, not on the Facebook, but in the book. In the book. Look at somebody say, in the book. Yeah, everything you need is in the You going through stuff, get in the, my young generation, when you got stuff going on, stop going to social media, get in the, because ladies and gentlemen, we're at a point to where if we don't stay in the book, we're going to be headed to destruction and we got to continue to teach and preach the book. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me go on to the text because I don't want to bore you. Um, so Paul is, Paul is he's, he's, he's telling them, we're not gonna, the ship not going to survive, but we're going to survive. Um, when you start reading the, 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 the scriptures over in verse 30, uh -huh. he's, he's telling them that I need you all to eat. First of all, let me back up. They were on a fast, second presider, they were on a fast. And um, it seems like, watch this, I'm going to help the body. It seems like when you're going through stuff and things are falling apart, that's when we try to get more spiritual. So the text says that they go on a fast. But can I tell you this? Let me just put this insight. Um, if God has already said that it's going to fall apart, you fasting ain't going to do nothing about it. Oh, Lord. I didn't, 
I think I'd have messed somebody up here. No, if, if God has already said I'm allowing it to fall apart in your life, then why are you fasting on something that he's already taken from you? You know what the problem is? We're trying to resuscitate something that's already dead. So, so God says, watch this. You're fasting. That's not going to do any good. Because if God says it's going to fall apart, it's going to fall apart. But just know, hold on, because I got something for you. But some things got to fall apart for other things to erect in your life. So he says, get up. Um, so, but, but what's confusing, Pastor Lafayette, is that when in the text he takes bread and wine, breaks it, gives thanks, what does that sound like? Communion. So, but wait a minute, I'm confused, church. Why, why are you doing communion in the midst of a storm? You want to know why? What Paul was doing? He says, even though I'm in a storm, I'm staying consistent, though. Oh, I just helped you there. You missed it. Because even though you're in a storm, don't stop coming to church. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Don't stop believing God for the miracle. You got to stay consistent. He's saying, he's saying, listen, I need you to stay consistent. Pastors, I need you to stay consistent. I need you to stay consistent. Lay people, I need you to stay consistent. Look at somebody again and tell them, stay consistent. <laughs> tell them again, stay consistent. And so watch this. A couple of things and then I'm done. Number one, for you to take, some, take away some notes. Number one, be cautious of your counsel. Be cautious of your counsel. In other words, to make it real simple, watch who you're listening to. Everybody may mean you well, but everybody doesn't understand your heart. Watch your counsel. Okay? In verse 29, the answer is clear. They dropped anchor, and everyone on the ship prayed for that day to come. And they prayed, because remember, Maxwell said at the beginning, Paul didn't have the influence. But by the end, he had the influence because everybody was listening to him. And so watch this. you got to be careful when you don't understand the things that are going on in your life and you take counsel from people, watch this, that are miserable themselves. Because we know the old saying, misery. Am I making sense? So look at somebody and tell them, watch your counsel. Okay? Watch your counsel. And then number two, I've already hit it, but I want you to be consistent in your Christianity. Be consistent. I said it earlier. I don't want to go back over. That's being redundant. So I want you to know, be consistent because Paul and them, they were having communion. They were being consistent. So I want you to be consistent. To children of God, people of God, God is saying tonight, stay consistent. Even with the things that are going on over the last 19, 20 months, stay consistent. Pastors, stay consistent. Oh, but I got a third one that's going to mess with you. It's going to mess with you. It's going to mess with you. Third thing, take care of your physical condition. But, but Bishop Jones, where is that in the text? I'm going to show it to you. He tells them, get up, eat, eat. Okay, eat. You need nourishment because remember, the ship is about to be broken. So you're going to need energy to. The text says, get up, eat, so that you can get nourishment, so that you could take care of your physical condition. We got a lot of churches across the country. We can shout, dance, speak in tongue, but we don't take care of our physical bodies. Oh, shucks. I, I may not be able to come back. <laughs> take care of your physical condition. Because if we're going to survive, remember, we're going to survive. We got to swim, and that, that takes physicality. 
They take strength. Hey, so you need the strength to go to the next level. Look at your neighbor and say, take care of your body. Take care of, no, tell them again, take care of your body. Okay, so watch this now. It's, 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 it's there in the text. Number four, and I'm almost there. Be content on setbacks. Because even though the ship now is about to be broken, even though they started off with a whole ship, where they're headed, though, the ship is no longer going to be there. You got to be content when God sets things back to say, even though you started off this way, you may not get to the destinations with the very things that you started off with. That's the reason why some of you have started on journeys and you had people that were with you here. But by the time you got here, they were no longer there. Pastors, when you start your churches and move to another dimension, you may have people that started off with you, but by the time 10 years get here or 15 years, the same people that started with you may not be with you. You got to be content with that. And you got to be, let me talk to you all, you got to be secure in your leadership. Okay? You got to be secure. So if they leave your church and go to somebody else's church, you're still secure in who you are. Because at the end of the day, that's God's people. And if I treated them well, oh, I can't get no help now. If I treated them well with respect and they still want to leave, then at least long, let them go and let them go to somebody else's. Am I making sense? Because sometimes you have to release toxic. And I tell people all the time, see, I'm, now, I'm free now in my leadership now. If, if you don't like where you are, find somewhere else. There's 100,000 churches that you can connect to, but you got to be secure in who you are. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm secure. Mm -hmm. Tell him, I love me some me. Yeah, I may be slender, I may be round, whatever the case may be, but I love me some me. And as a matter of fact, can't nobody beat me being me. So you got to be content with some setbacks. Because he's saying, listen, there are going to be some of you that are going to swim on broken pieces. But then there are going to be some of you that are going to swim with nothing in your hand. Mm. Because there are some people here, and I got two groups tonight. you either going to be swimming with nothing in your hand or you're going to be swimming on broken pieces. In other words, those of you who have had broken dreams broken vision God says hold on to that broken piece and swim to shore swim to shore let, let, let me work on that broken piece let me work on the dream let me work on it but then there's a group that is swimming they say I don't want nothing to do with that ship I'm so glad that God has given me a new way of doing things look at somebody and say new way new way new way and sometimes God cannot pour new wine in the old wine skin. Am I in the book? I, I just want to know in the book because I'm getting ready to close because lastly, you got to be confident that your journey will continue. Be confident that, is, that it's not the end of your story. I need somebody to look at a neighbor and tell them it's not the end of my story. It's not. You got to be confident that this is not the last chapter of my biography. Mm. That the Lord is so good that the shipwreck is not the end of my journey. Can I prove it to you? The Bible says when they get to chapter 28 that Paul and them landed on an island called Malta. They were shipwrecked. For three months. After three months was up and winter had passed, they realized that there was another ship that docked on Malta that was on its way to Rome. A future, a faith for a future. A faith for a future. You got to know that your journey is going to continue. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith that God is not going to see you through. Can I speak to somebody tonight? God always has another ship. 
Look at somebody and tell them God has another ship. Yeah, he always has another vessel. God always has another plan to get you where you need to go. Why are you upset about the ship that was wrecked? God has another ship that is waiting on you. God has another job. God has another plan. God has something waiting with your name on it. And this is for about 10 of you. Not only, watch this, not only do you have to, first of all, trust him in the process. But you got to know that you have survived because Paul said they, they pulled out the anchor, put it in the water at first. And Paul said, if you get in the water, you're not going to survive. But I know I got some witnesses tonight that can testify I'm a survivor. No, I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm a survivor. As a matter of fact, do me a favor, look at somebody real good with an attitude and tell them, I've been through some stuff, but I am a survivor. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, Lord have mercy. I feel my help here. Do me a favor, tell them one more time, I may have tears in my eyes, but I'm still a survivor. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way to the other side. And that's why David said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy is going to come in the morning. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and tell them congratulations. You done survived some of the worst seasons of your life. Is there anybody here that know the devil want to take you out? But oh, I got good news for you. As a matter of fact, I got a scripture for you. No weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Uh, let's ride, boys. Uh, do me one last favor. Uh, look at them in the eye uh, and tell them the good news is uh, whatever the devil meant for evil. Uh, uh, God is getting ready to, to turn it around in your favor. Is there anybody here that knows be not dismayed, whatever be tied? The Lord will. He'll take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? You may have tears in your eyes, but the Lord will. I said the Lord will. Won't he make a way for him? Won't he open doors for him? Won't he heal your body? Can you say yes? Yes. And that's the reason why I let the Lord order my steps. That's the reason why I continue to look to the hills from which come in my help. Because my help comes from the Lord. Is there anybody here you can look up towards heaven and say, I may have been shipwrecked, but I still got my joy. I may have been shipwrecked, but I still got my happiness. Everybody may have walked away from me, but I still got Jesus. Is there anybody here you got Jesus on your side? And can I tell you this? Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. But I yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say, when you fall down on your knees and have a little talk with me, Grandmama and them said, just a little talk with Jesus. We'll make everything. We'll make everything all right. But I am I'm so glad tonight that I got a Savior that can hold me in the midst of my storms. I got a Savior that can wipe tears from my eyes. Is there anybody here? You know God will make a way for you. Lift your voice and say, he will. Shout, he will. But I am my Lord. I feel an anointing in here. Lay hands on yourself and say, self, be healed.
healed. Be delivered. Because I got a faith for the future. I got a faith that holds me. I got a faith that will rock me in the middle of the hour. But oh, oh, I feel Lord have mercy. I feel something, but do me a favor and I gotta sit down. Take your pointer finger, point it at your neighbor, and say, by this time next year, you're gonna have a testimony that's gonna blow your enemy's mind. Tell them pull up to the table, because the table is spread. They're preparing a table in the presence of my enemies. David, what do you say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pasture. Yes, leading me beside the still water. Yay, yay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they, they comfort me. They're preparing a table. Look at somebody and tell them God is getting ready to move you to higher heights. Shout, I got a faith for the future. I've been shipwrecked. I've been talked about. I've been lied on. But I, I'm getting ready. Yeah. He cannot both see. He cannot both Turn around one good time and say.